Hello, everyone. How are we doing out there today? Hello, Drina here. It's been a long time since I've done a cooking video, which I'm not cooking today, but I have something super fun to share. I hope you're set up with some tea and chocolate. Got mine. Shall we start with a little nibble? I think we should, right? Mmm. Mmm. So today, very exciting day. I'm making ice cream. Yeah, it's November and I'm making ice cream. But I know some of you are watching from Australia and other warm places this time of year. So this is perfect for you right now. Mm. So stay till the end of the video because I'm doing a giveaway. We are going to give away a copy of Drina's Kind Kitchen. And that's super perfect if you already have a copy because that means you get a copy to give to someone for Christmas, right? Or anytime. And the reason I'm giving away a copy of this, well, one, because it's my most recent book, right? So I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> Two, it's gift time of the year. Three, there's another ice cream recipe in here, which can be made in this machine, the Ninja Creamy. So I thought it would be a perfect opportunity for you guys to have another ice cream recipe to play with. And in here it's called Maui Gelato, okay? So stay away till the end of, stay away, stay until, I'm getting so excited here. <laughs> It's ice cream. I'm getting excited till the end of the video. Hello, everyone joining in. Nice to have you here. Um, do you know about this machine, the Ninja Creamy? I didn't. I heard about it from you guys. I'm not sure what um, I think it was a Facebook post. Someone mentioned that they've been using this machine and it's brilliant for plant based ice creams and especially nice creams because you can reblend the mixture. And I'm like, Hmm, that sounds intriguing because we all know that when you make your own ice creams at home, unless you have an ice cream machine, um, and also though, unless you're using a really higher fat kind of base for the ice cream, it gets very hard in the freezer after you make it, right? So you blend the mixture, and even if you have a nice cream machine and you use that to blend it and you get a nice creamy mixture, you put it in the freezer and then the next day when you take it out, it's not usually the same texture as a store-bought ice cream because they either use really high fat um, components or they have certain um, fillers in it to make it more scoopable. So. When you take it out, it's really, really hard. And if you ever made an ice cream, like banana and ice cream, which, hey guys, no banana in this one today, you know what I'm talking about. It comes out and it's like rock hard. So this machine allows you to just pop it in and reblend it. So it's like soft serve consistency all the time. So I heard about it and I had to get one to try it out. I've had it since the summer. You know how it's like you get a machine? Anyone know this experience? This was my experience with the Instant Pot too. When I got it, it sat in the box for six months because I was, I felt like it was this huge ordeal to understand how to use a new machine. <laughs> Does anyone else have that experience? Anyhow, this one didn't sit in the box too long, maybe about a month. And then I got it out and started playing with it. So today I have a very exciting vanilla bean ice cream recipe to share with you. It's delicious. And there's no banana because I know People get a lot of banana-based ice creams in the vegan world because we use it as a base. And there's no coconut because I don't want any more emails about coconut, please. I don't want any more Amazon reviews about coconut, please. <laughs> it's like this demon ingredient that I keep hearing from people about. So I did not include coconut in this recipe. So let's get going with it. We are using, first we're using the Blendtec to puree the mixture. Now this machine, you can take things from the freezer. Like if you wanted to make a sorbet and you had say frozen raspberries, frozen sliced bananas in the freezer, you could pull them out, pop them in the machine and whir it up and you get yourself like a sorbet right away. But this is more of an ice cream and I want to blend the base first, freeze it in the containers that it comes with 
and then use the machine. Hello, Jennifer Joyne. Ah, oh, she's been excited about this recipe. It's very nice to see your beautiful face join. I can see your little picture join here today. Thank you. All right, so we're getting going. So the mixture begins with, we do have some soaked nuts. We have some soaked cashews. It's not a lot, it's a half cup. And I use, I did this in my cashew milk recipe. I buy the cashew pieces that are just like the random scraps that they don't know what to do with. So they sell them for cheaper, right? And you can buy organic ones this way. So when you buy the whole cashew nut, it's more expensive than the pieces or the very, very tiny pieces like this because people sometimes want the whole cashew nut to use in recipes where the nut stays whole, right? Say if you're making chocolates or something like that. So you can get the nut pieces for cheaper. All right, so we've got that. And we have a little bit of unrefined sugar. I'm using light unrefined sugar. I know I'm going to ask, be asked if you can use dates. So let's just get it out of the way now. If you want to use date sugar, you can, but the ice cream won't look vanilla. It's going to look muddy. It's going to look dark. If you don't care about that, then go for it. Use it. If you want an ice cream that looks like a vanilla ice cream, use a light sugar. Otherwise, it's going to look like caramelly color. Um, and for me, aesthetics are also important, especially when I photo get pho recipes photographed. I have a photographer who does them for me. When I get them photographed for the website, I want it to look like a vanilla ice cream. So this is what we're using. It's just an unrefined cane sugar, okay? So it's not like white sugar where everything's stripped out of it. Um, it's still, um, you know, better than white sugar. Not, you know, fabulous. We know sugar is not the best thing, but it's not even that much. It's a quarter to a third cup. That's not a lot for the whole batch. So the ice cream recipes use like, you know, a cup of sugar. All right. So we're getting that into the blend tech and this is our magic ingredient. And I know some of you know what it is because you know, I love it. It's not banana. It's sweet potato, yellow sweet potato. So I'm using the Murs, I think it's called Murasaki. I think that's how it's pronounced. They're the ones that are like purple on the outside, but white on the inside. Even better is to use the Hanna, which are white on the inside and have a little bit of a golden skin uh, because they are actually even a little more yellow on the inside. Sometimes these ones get a little darker when you bake them up, but either will work, right? And they provide a really beautiful base for this ice cream and you don't get a strong sweet potato taste. All right, no bananas, but sweet potatoes. And then another secret ingredient is two tablespoons of oat flour, just a little bit, just a little bit of oat flour. And that gives it that like, um, kind of what's the word I want to use. It's like a, almost as if you were using a gum in the recipe, but you're not. You know how some ice cream recipe or ice cream brands, you see they have things in it like uh, Jalan gum or uh, there's a few other ones. It gives it like a viscosity. I think that's the word I wanna use. So a little bit of oat flour and some non-dairy milk. Now you use whichever non-dairy milk you want to use. Uh, the richer the milk you use, I need a little bit more, the richer the ice cream will be. If you use a thinner milk, say like, like Trader Joe's oat milk is really nice because it's basic. It's just oats and water. There's no extra stuff added, uh, but it's a thinner oat milk than if you were to use one that's um, say like an, an Oatly. I don't want to throw brands out there that I'm not affiliated with. I'm not like trying to sell them. I'm just saying like if you use a thicker milk, then it's going to have a richer consistency. And then we have the other bit of magic. And to me, this is not optional. I have a brand new bottle. I haven't opened it yet. Mm-hmm. Crack it open and breathe it in. Breathe it in. It's like perfume, but better. The pure vanilla bean powder. I just ran out and got a new bottle. There we go. Here it is, guys. Look at that and we use just a little bit. It's so fragrant, fragrant, and yes, you could use vanilla extract, but the powder is just like, 
one, it looks beautiful in the ice cream because you can see the flex and it has much more potency. So I highly recommend using it. We're going to just get a little bit of it in there now. Oh, it's glorious. And um, you also don't want to use too much so it doesn't um, discolor the um, ice cream. And I find vanilla extract can do that more than the powder. I don't know why. And then a little titch of salt, just a titch because it bumps, bumps up all the flavors. All right, we have to puree this. It's going to be a little noisy. smell the vanilla bean. So then when you have it blended, this is what you do. The Ninja Creamy machine comes with two of these little um, vessels. And this is what you store the ice cream in or your puree in the freezer. So this is what it goes in. I'm going to re-blend this after because there's a few bits not quite blended. But I just want to give you the effect. And you fill it. There's a max line. And this recipe works pretty much perfectly. You get right to the max line. There's a tiny bit left over and I usually just put it in a bowl in the fridge and eat it like a little pudding because um, that's good too. So you fill it to the max line, cover it, and you put it in the freezer. It needs to be level so you don't want it tipping to one side and that just goes in the freezer. And then when it's frozen and you need like overnight to freeze it, so hang tight. I'm going to get the one that's in the freezer. Then you get your little guy out of the freezer. This one I already blended before we went on camera because the blending is very loud um, when it needs to churn it. And usually I need two blends. Sometimes I do two blends and what's called a respin. And I think depending on the contents of the ice cream, again, I think if there's more fat in the ice cream, it's going to probably need one blend. But when when ice cream doesn't have as much of that like fatty consistency in my experience using the machine you need two blends on the ice cream mode so then this goes in you take the lid off here we go and it goes into this bottom jar and there's you can see how it fits in the base of it there's a little grooves and then there's this top that goes on with the blade. This is not sharp, so you can insert this. It's really easy to take out to wash. You just press the button, it pops out. I've already used it, so it's a little bit wet. And then pop it back in. So it's quite easy to, um, to clean and it's not sharp, so that's very nice. And then you pop the lid on. It's really easy. It goes on. It locks in place. There we go. We have it. Then you put it into the machine. You guys have a, need a better view of this machine. Here's the machine. Let me change the camera angle. And maybe put down the blind so you guys can see it. Is that better? Can you see it a little better now? So here's the machine. Um, it does take up a little counter space. When I'm not using it, I just put it aside. I bring it out into my... Um, other room just outside the kitchen uh, because it is fairly big and it also doesn't fit under my counters so I just move it but for ice cream it's worth it <laughs> to have it take a little space so then it pops on here and it shows you it gives you arrows you lock it turning to the right so you put this in and it just kind of falls into place and then you turn it, and as you turn it, it lifts it up, locks it into place, boom, it's done. And now I'm gonna turn it on, and because I've already blended it, I'm just gonna do a respin down here. But they have different functions based on what you're making. Ice cream, smoothie bowl, milkshake, sorbet. For me, it's kind of like any other machine that I just wanna turn it on. I, <laughs> Um, you know, if I use a pressure cooker or, um, food processor, 
all those functions, even my blender, I just turn it on. I don't need it. To me, it's like all those functions are nice and fancy, but generally they all kind of do the same thing. <laughs> like the clean function on a blender is just swishing around the water. So I know they have a purpose and I know, especially with the blender, if it's a really thick mixture, it starts out slowly and then goes faster. But generally I just press the ice cream mode every time. And so I'm probably um, not doing what the company would like me to do in a video saying that, um, but I just press ice cream. And then if it's never quite fully blended, I just do it again or hit Respin. And when I say it's not fully ready, you'll know because when you open it up, it's not creamy enough. It's not scoopable. You can't just put a spoon in and scoop it out. Okay, enough talking. Here we go. We're going to respin. Um, the respin takes a little bit of time and um, is noisy. The ice cream mode is a little bit longer and noisier. So then you, there's an unlock button over here you press and it pops it back off. And then we have our ice cream and I'm going to get a little spoon and show you. There, that's a nice little spoon. I think this is, yeah, look at that. Look at that money shot right there, guys. See how delicious and luscious that is? <gasps> Look, I know you guys want this. I know you do. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so exciting to me to make ice cream because, well, I'll go on this in a second. I think it's time to taste it, shouldn't we? And so you can blend it another bit and make it even softer. But to me, this is perfect consistency. Mm -mm -mm. It is so darn good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now, I will say that using the sweet potato, I think it's better to roast it, bake it in the oven. I think it gets a better flavor and it's not as watery. So that's one tip. I love ice cream. Honestly, it would probably be like my last meal. <laughs> so ah. um, if I could live off ice cream, I might. Um, anyhow, it, so with the sweet potato, I would bake it. And then it's even, so this batch I did with the Murasaki, it's a little bit darker. And this one I did with the Hannah. However, when you blend it, it gets lighter. So when you first take it out of the freezer, it's darker. And then the blending, it lightens it. I don't know, some kind of magic why that happens. Um, and this is thicker than, look at that that company that we know that does that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So now you could re-spin and put in little bits of um, cookie or something like that. That's another option is to throw some yummy bits in there and do a re-spin. That's a good idea too. Oh, so what I was going to say is I love to make my own ice cream because one, you can really adapt the sweeteners and make it much more, you know, whole foods. But I think it should, I think an ice cream should be, you know, a little bit decadent too, right? That's why I'm not using like dates in it. I have made ice creams with dates. Um, but sometimes when you use dates and everything, everything tastes like dates. After a while, everything just tastes like dates. That has been my experience too. I don't, I don't not use them and I'm not 
hating on them. It's just, I don't feel like they should be in every single recipe. So, um, and when people are really concerned about like, you know, sugars, they have a higher glycemic index than coconut sugar. Um, so you, you know, you can kind of use a little bit of coconut sugar or unrefined sugar, and maybe you don't have to use as many dates. Right. So anyways, that's my date, um, spiel, but when you make your own ice creams, so some of you know I've had this whole thing with like pea protein and having to look at the labels to make sure I'm not buying things with pea protein. It is in so many ice creams, so many. I have had to like every time I buy it, like, oh, that's exciting, a new ice cream. And then I pick it up and look at the label in a store. Almost always it has pea protein. So um, they're put in for fillers and such, right? So when you make your own, you avoid that. Plus you can make it less sweet. I give a range of sweetener in the recipe. You can add other, you know, add-ins. So I plan to do some other flavors. I plan to do my four flavors I want to do. Vanilla, I want to do pumpkin very soon. And I want to do ch another chocolate and a strawberry. Um, oh, I want to do an eggnog. Oh, but that would be really easy. I might give an give an um, adaptation in the recipe to make eggnog because really eggnog is just a little bit of nutmeg that you can add to this. Okay. So I have talked on and on. Doesn't that look exciting guys? Um, oh, you don't have, okay. So like girl saying she doesn't have those sweet potatoes where you live. Would you sub bananas? I wouldn't sub bananas because I just feel that they're too banana y in the recipe. When my um, photographer did this recipe, she also could not find the yellow sweet potatoes. So I gave her an adaptation to use about a half cup of white potato. When I say white, I don't mean russet. I mean like the yellow, yellow uh, skin or red skin, but you take the skin off to use cooked, not raw, cooked yellow potato, like about half the measure and then add in some extra cashews and oat flour. I, I'll go back when I post the recipe because I haven't posted it yet. I'll go back and see what exactly I mentioned to her to do because she couldn't find them in her area either. So there's an option for you. And then you might have to adjust the sweetener a little bit because the sweet potatoes do add some sweetness. And um, hi, Bonnie. Can you use one Yes, Bonnie, I was just going to mention that in the recipe because I just got, she's asking, can you use a cashew butter in place of the cashews? Again, when I post the recipe, I'll offer the modification to use a cashew butter. The reason I like raw cashews is because most people, when they buy cashew butter, it's roasted. It's not raw, right? Most of the cashew butters you see in the store have been made with roasted cashews and they have more of a nutty cashew flavor, but they're also really dark in color. There aren't a lot of brands that do raw and Wilderness Poets is one of them. They do the most beautiful nut butters. Um, I'm going to add their link in the, they have actually have a, oh, you know what? It's in the description because if you go, I put it in the description, I put the link for um, the vanilla bean powder and, um, in the description, I put the link uh -oh. for, um, <sighs> I played my own YouTube video. Okay. So I'm going to put wilderness poets in the description here. Don't you love my high tech setup? Play my own videos. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I put that in the description for you because, or in the chat, because in the description, I added it for the vanilla bean powder. Boom. But they do the most beautiful nut butters. And I showed you guys uh, about a month ago, there are new nut butter mixtures that they have for making nut milks. It's called, um, they changed the name, it's called Spin. And I just got their cashew one, so hang tight. <clears throat> so when I post the recipe, I'll do the conversion. I'm saying it would probably be I'd say it's probably just going to be like a couple tablespoons, but that's a great question. So they now have this one, which is for uh, cashew milk. And so you can see how nice this cashew butter is. Just look at the color of that, right? And I have a roasted one in the fridge. I'll show you. Hang on. 
So look at the difference in this one's at the bottom. This is usually what we save for the dog for after his bath. So see the color of that and then the color of that. Plus this one has a strong cashew flavor and this one doesn't. And that's because it's been roasted. When you toast a roast nuts, they have a stronger flavor. So that's why I would, I use raw cashews in the recipe because I know everyone can access raw cashews or most people can, where sometimes getting raw cashew butter, you have to order online, etc. But this would be a beautiful, beautiful substitution. It smells so fresh and good. Like it's the, their the products are exceptional. A, um, I love them. And they have a, I just saw an email from them this morning. They actually have a Black Friday sale starting now. Black Friday like started three weeks ago, right? <laughs> I've been getting emails for three weeks. So anyhow, if you go over to their site, you're going to get these on sale and this on sale. Um, and then they also have this new one for macadamia um, butter and to make macadamia milk. I think this one has their vanilla bean powder. Oh my gosh, so good. So you could also use that. That's a little thinner though. Um, so, okay, that was that question. How many dates would you use? I don't know. I don't want to use dates in this. <laughs> I just um, peel the date so it wouldn't make the vanilla, but the inside of the date is still brown. I'm not sure. See, with dates, it's not just the color. It's also the texture. Like the outside of the date is fibrous. And when that goes into the ice cream, you, you get that. So maybe you could peel them. Maybe you could find some like dates that are really light in color. But I didn't test this with dates. So I just feel like I have other recipes with dates. I have a chocolate ice cream with dates on my site if you want to try that one. I'm keeping this pure like vanilla ice cream should be <laughs> so because it already has a whole foods in it. it already has sweet potato and I feel like when you add everything and just blend it up it just tastes like a, a sweet soup or something I don't know I just I you know I want to love using all whole foods and I use mostly whole foods um but for an ice cream I think you know you can use a little bit of unrefined sugar and it's not going to hurt and you could probably use a lot less than you think you could probably use less than i have in the recipe or use a half and half and try it out that's all um oh erythritol i have no experience with erythritol at all erythritol i'm saying it correctly so i don't want to give you any suggestions i have no idea and I've never worked with it. So you'd have to play around with the recipe. So I didn't give you the recipe yet because I haven't got it posted yet. Um, I've been doing my um, workshop the last couple of weeks that some of you are involved in, my um, fascial workshop. Uh, we had it last week. It was so much fun. And um, people getting really good results already, like feeling they are having less pain and can move more. It's like, it's wonderful to share it. So, but I've been really busy with that. So I don't even have this posted yet. When I get it posted, I'll add some of those modifications, but um, you'd have to kind of play with that yourself because I don't know. And to make sure you get the recipe in the description is the link to my newsletter. Sign up so you get it. I'll also put it in the chat again here. So to make sure you get it. And then we have to take care of our little giveaway here. I'm going to put that in the chart newsletter. Yeah, I mean, I'm not hating on dates, Janice. I just think like, you know, they have their place and I've made cookies with them. I've made, I have a bundt cake that's sweetened with dates. I have a chocolate ice cream on my site. You could just go to my site, DreenaBurton.com. There's a chocolate gelato that's sweetened only with dates. And um, now I, when I make things with dates, sometimes I love it and other times I really just notice that it tastes datey and I don't want it to. So, you know, that's just kind of my position or my like, you know, maybe uber sensitivity as a recipe developer that I'm like, ah, I just want to have it taste different this time. All right, so I think I got all your questions. And so, too, um, I'm going to open the blinds again and brighten it up in here. Um, to enter the giveaway, tell me, please, comment. So this is our chat, 
and our chat. Does anyone want to see the ice cream again? Because I put it down. I'll get a fresh spoon so I'm not double dipping. I love this little wooden spoon that we have. Everyone kind of fights over that one. There we go. Let's look at it again. Yummy, 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 yummy. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And then when you put it back in the freezer, right? So you put it back in the freezer. And what I do is I just level it out again. I just kind of level it out. Put the top back on in the freezer. And then tomorrow night when you want to have, when you're watching Netflix, it's not going to be rock hard because you take it out, pop it back in the machine, put it on ice cream and it makes a perfect soft serve again. It's miraculous. I love it. So um, if you didn't get a good view of the machine, let's see, that's it there. <laughs> Which way is my camera? I'm so technical. Mm. Okay, you see it. You go online and see it. They've got pictures of it. I'm not. That's that's good, right? We're, it's all about the ice cream, anyways. I mean, we love the machine, but it's all about the ice cream. So to enter to win this cookbook for yourself or for a gift for the holidays, post. In fact, I'm going to make it even sweeter, just like ice cream. I'm going to make it a kit, Adrena's Kind Kitchen kit. So what that is is the cookbook a kind kitchen tea towel. It says my kind kitchen. It's so precious. And you get a print like this with your name on it. So it would say like Janice's kind kitchen or Jennifer's kind kitchen. Isn't that fun? And some laptop stickers, which I have on my laptops and I can't show you because they're on the other side. So to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is comment after we're, we're done with the live video go to the comments after like on YouTube, Facebook, it's already there, but on YouTube, you need to go to the video after and comment. Okay. And tell me if you have the Ninja Creamy or if you don't, and maybe it's going to be on your, you know, holiday wish list. So that's it. Do you have it? Do you love it? What do you make with it? If not, what would you like to make with it? How about that? And I'm also going to reach out to Ninja and see if they'll do a creamy giveaway with me. I'll see you know, maybe for the holidays, they'll offer one for you guys. I'm going to look into it. Okay. It was lovely to be here with you guys today. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and um, sign up below to my newsletter to get the recipe when it goes out, because you know what social media is like. It's hard to see posts. There's algorithms. When I post it, about 10% of my audience sees it. When I put it out in my newsletter, you know you're going to see it in your inbox, okay? So sign up, and then you guys can enjoy the ice cream too, okay? See you guys. Have a good day.